Folks, good to see you tonight. We want to welcome you in the Savior's name, and especially if you're visiting with us, we give you a very warm welcome. And those online, we want to give you a welcome as well. Uh, we're going to open our service tonight uh, by singing a lovely hymn. It's hymn number 306. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause, maintain the honor of his word, the glory of his cross. I'm going to stand as we sing this opening hymn, and let us really sing it out with all of our hearts. Amen. Let's all stand to sing.
And let's seek the Lord's face as we come in to his presence this evening. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank thee and we praise thee for all thy mercies to us tonight. We thank thee, Lord, for our blessed Savior, the one who laid down his life a ransom for the many. And, O oh God, we pray this evening that you would come, Lord, and speak to all of our hearts. We thank thee for your presence with us last night and for the precious word of God to our souls. And, O oh God, we pray that you'd bless your servant this evening. We thank thee, Lord, for bringing the Reverend Salt here safely. And we do pray, Lord, as he opens up thy word this evening, that he might know the help of the Lord. O oh God, be with him. We thank thee, Lord, for him. And we thank thee for the day you saved them and the day you called them to be a preacher of the gospel. And Lord, we just pray for every head bowed in your presence tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would come and be one of our number. We pray, Lord, that even this evening, that again we might leave God's house saying it was good to be here, for it was here where we met afresh with the Lord. Oh God, we pray again for our families. We thank thee for them. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us household salvation. We thank thee, Lord, for those that are saved in our families. And, O oh God, we pray that you lead them on with yourself. And help us, Lord, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that are not saved, Lord, those that are backslidden, we pray that you'll save them, that you'll draw them back to their first love. And, O oh God, we pray in these days that we might know a breath of revival even in our own homes. Bless our churches. Bless our ministers. We pray, Lord, that you would come and send us a breath of revival. And Lord, we'll be very careful to give thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. So undertake for us now. We just commit this meeting to thee. Cover the meeting in the blood. Defeat the devil. We pray, Lord, that we might know a real sense of thy presence this evening for us in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Now, again, it's good to see so many in the meeting tonight, and again, we want to thank you sincerely for coming. And if you are visiting tonight outside our own congregation, we give you a very warm welcome indeed. And those tuning on through the social media, we give you a welcome as well. We want to welcome especially our guest preacher tonight, the Reverend Kern Salf from our church in Ochali. Brother, you're very, very welcome. And we do pray that as he comes just in a few moments' time to preach the word of God, that the Lord will bless him and the Lord will bless us through him, especially all the husbands in the meeting tonight looking forward to the, 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 the sermon this evening. Just to remind you again, if you need reminding of the rest of the meetings this week, Wednesday night, uh, tomorrow night, the Reverend Peter McIntyre will be here and he'll be preaching on the role of the wife in the home. And then on Thursday night, the Reverend Paul Thompson will come along, and he'll be preaching on the importance of the family altar in the home. And then on Friday night, the Reverend David Brown will be here, and he'll be dealing with the role of the children in the home. And we would ask you to remember the remaining meetings and come along uh, each night, or certainly as many nights as you possibly can. Now, we're delighted to have the Reverend Salt with us, good friend of mine, and we're going to loose him and let him go, and I have said he has plenty of time to preach tonight, and we're looking forward to God's message this evening. God bless you, brother. Can you turn, please, in your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians in chapter 5? I suppose this is one of the classic passages that any preacher would turn to. Um, when we're speaking in anything to do with the family. And as you're turning to Ephesians chapter 5, could I thank the Reverend Gray for the opportunity to come along this evening to Tandra Gay. It's nice to look around, see some familiar faces, but we're delighted to see you all, whether we know you or not, and want to thank you again for coming along. We trust that the Lord will bless us during this time together, that He will draw near and warm our hearts in, in fellowship, and He will indeed have a word for our souls. I believe the Reverend Gray has preached on husbands fairly recently, and he just wanted to hear it. He wanted you to hear it from a young man's perspective, and that's why he invited me. Well, I'm actually a little bit older than him, so I'm just jesting when I say that tonight. We're delighted to see you, and we're thankful to be here again this evening. We trust the whole week um, in these days when there's so much of an attack 
upon the family. A very important week for everybody in the congregation and all, and the whole theme is very, very vital um, for us that the Lord would help us and encourage us through His Word. Now, we're looking in Ephesians chapter 5, and maybe you would turn with me, please, to, um, I'll just take my watch off, the Reverend Gray did say that I don't have, um, there's no big hurry tonight, and I was saying to him that I was speaking last evening over at Lurgan at the recording, and it was just a lot shorter than normal, just about 16 or 17 minutes preaching, but it was so much more difficult than normal because of the situation and what you're trying to do. So tonight, I wouldn't say it's easier, but there's less stress involved in that. And I don't know how long I'll go. It might go a little bit more than 16 minutes, but we'll not keep you here all night. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, and the word simply means accurately. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord, the church. Amen. We'll end the reading there at the end of verse 29, and we trust that the Lord will bless His Word to all of our hearts. Could we please unite together briefly in prayer as we look to the Lord for His help this evening. Our Father, under God in heaven, we do thank You for the opportunity that we have to gather for friendship tonight, just to get into our cars and to come along and greet one another and Lord, especially to meet with Thee. And we know that the Lord has promised that where two or three are met in His name, that He will be in the midst. And Lord, we thank You for this week of special ministry meetings. We thank You, Lord, for the important theme. And Lord, tonight we have to say that we love our families. And Lord, we always want the best for them, whether it is for the husbands or the wives or if there's offspring there, whatever the case might be. Lord, in every area of our life, we need God's help and presence. And therefore, we pray that Thy Word now would come with freshness, that it might come with personal relevance to every waiting heart, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure the Reverend John Gray had no particular agenda whenever he invited me to come along and to speak on the subject of husband. It's a broad subject. If you wanted to speak on it for a series of meetings, you could probably do that. And it's knowing exactly what to say. There's a young girl not very long ago discussing this very thing, the husband's responsibility. And she said, I think one of my husband's main responsibilities is to make sure that he's not at home when all my online orders arrive. And um, then she laughed. Of course, she was just jesting. 
But being a husband is being the, wife, the husband and being married to one woman. And therefore, that being the case, this being a husband is a very solemn and a very serious matter. And God the Holy Spirit in this passage in Ephesians chapter 5, He draws a very clear parallel between Christ, who is the head of His bride, the church. The parallel between that and between the husband there in his relationship with his wife. And folks, as you look at this chapter, and indeed part of the next one that has quite a bit to do with relationships, there is one verse in chapter 18, or in, in, in chapter 5, that is, that is key to it all, and that is verse 18, where the Lord here says, Be not drunk, with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The word drunk there, and indeed the word filled, are words in the original language which carry the meaning of being drenched or being saturated. I find it interesting that the word that is translated filled in verse 18 is also translated over in John chapter 12, and perhaps only here in the New Testament, and in verse 3. And there is in this verse a great illustration of the, the work of the Holy Spirit. It says here in John chapter 12 and verse 3, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. The word filled there is the exact same word that we've been reading over together in Ephesians chapter 5. And you can see here from verse 3 that the odor um, from the ointment filled the house. It was, it was there in the living room, but it was also in the little cupboard under the stairs. And everywhere else in the home, there was nowhere where the odor was not to be found. And that is the meaning of what the Lord is showing us in verse 18 of chapter 5, when we are instructed to be filled with the Spirit. And if that is the case, then the outlook regarding our relationships will be a good one. It will be a good one because it goes on after this, remember what we're looking at, and whether we're looking at wives or husbands or children, whatever the case is, it is in the context of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we look at the word husband. The word husband is a word that is associated with an old Norse word. Uh, two words, actually, house or hus, which meant home or dwelling place, and Bondi, which meant dweller or, or householder, it actually carries the meaning of being the band of the house. When you think of it, the house band or the husband, the band of the house, it referred to a metal band that had been manufactured and was used to hold things together. And already it's very clear to us all that the husband's responsibility is a very big one. If he is, in a sense, to have that responsibility of holding things together, the husband, in a very real sense, plays a big part in keeping the house together. And the example we're giving and the inspiration that we have and the model that we try to follow the best we can here is Christ Himself, because that is what the apostle says when he was showing them that Christ, and reminding them that Christ is the head of the church, and makes a comparison there between uh, the church and Christ and the husband and his wife. So I want to look with you for a while this evening then at the husband. 
I want, first of all, to draw your attention to his delight, husband's delight. It says in verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ's love was unconditional. I want to say, first of all, that Christ's love and his delight in his church, it was sacrificial. And that love was expressed in blood of the cross when he gave his life a ransom for people like me and the Reverend Gray and other people here who are saved. His love was sacrificial. But if you look over in Colossians chapter 3 and the verse 19, again the apostle there um, says to love your wives. I just turn to it. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Now, perhaps there's an implication there, and I'm sure there is, that you could be better against them. But it's interesting that where we're told here, love your wives and be not bitter against them, it's not a casual suggestion. In the original language, it's a command. It's a command to love our wives. And you think of the, the sacrifice that Christ made for us. Husbands, we need to be willing to sacrifice regarding our wives. And that can mean time. I'm interested in field sports, so is your minister. And I'm interested in several other things as well. But my wife's not particularly interested in them. She's interested in other things. And I have to understand that I have to take time to take on board her interests as well. Christ was not selfish, and neither should I be. It's the thought of, of, of time, but then what about talk? Busy life, busy world. I read one day that someone said regarding marriage, they said the first year he did the speaking and she did the listening. The second year of marriage, she did the speaking, and he did the listening. Then the third year of marriage, they both tried to speak, and the neighbors all did the listening. Not good, as far as that was concerned. But folks, you think of how Christ, in love and in gentleness, he speaks to his church, but he listens to his church. And that is the example that I have to follow. Time for us talks with us. Don't we sing sometimes, he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. Sacrifice is an important part of our role as husbands regarding time and regarding talk. Some time ago I was speaking to an individual. I want to say right away that he does not belong to Akali congregation nor any free Presbyterian congregation. But things had fallen apart. And I knew that he wasn't altogether blameless. Far from it. Uh, and what he said to me was, and I try not to get angry. I hope I'm patient and gentle as much as I can be. But there's one thing that gets under my skin. And it is people when they display selfishness to such an extent that the words they use are nearly always the same. I need a new start. And I looked at him and I, I, I just felt like saying, no, you, you don't need a new start. You need to remember your marriage vows. You, where you vowed before the Lord to love your wife. Um, for better or worse, uh, and in sickness and in health. Sacrifice is important, folks. But what about sharing? Christ, the Bible tells us, is not ashamed to call us brethren. Uh, and sometimes 
whoever we are as believers, I think in fairness, we wonder at that and wonder why. But it's because of His great love towards His church. I referred the other day, um, I'm not even sure whether it was a few weeks ago, whether it was in Akali or in Mount Marion, where I'm looking after, I referred to Revelation chapter 3. And the Lord writing there to a Christian church um, and speaking to them, He spoke to them in love, of course, but they were the Laodiceans, the Laodicean church. And He said to them in verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. It hardly bears thinking about that Christ is left outside the door, that His presence is not welcome. And surely when we think of sharing as Christians, we have to think of the vital importance of Christ being with us. Some of us meet in large congregations. Some of us meet together in relatively small ones, and there are people in the UK who meet in very tiny ones. And wherever we are, we must have that sharing with Christ. He wants to be there. He's promised here in this verse, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. What a pitiful situation. But you and I want to share with our wives too. And that sharing with our wives, it will mean, brethren, it will mean being sensitive Being sensitive, if you look there in verse 23, it says there that, this is of Ephesians chapter 5, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Now, the head, your head or your mind will know if your leg is sore. Your head will know if your arm is sore. And Christ, as the head of the church, He has a listening heart. And don't forget this tonight. He's sensitive to your needs. He has a listening heart, and He's sensitive to your needs. Over there in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, it says, concerning Him and His high priestly ministry, it says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is Christ, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He thinks upon you, and He thinks upon me, and when there's something that is hurting, Christ is sensitive to that because He loves is church. And you and I would always be on the lookout for anything that would be upsetting or hurting our wives. Sometimes they don't like to cause a great deal of hassle, and they just try to cover it up. But you want to be looking out for it and be sensitive to their needs in that way. But not only we think here of sensitive, we think of the need for support. The world is broken. You don't need me to tell you that. And all around us, there's indications of discouragement every week. And sometimes that discouragement, if we're not careful, it can lead to disillusionment, which can put us on a road that will not see us progress. But we're to be there to support our wives because Christ many a time has supported us. I think one of the loveliest pictures and passages regarding that is over in the Song of Solomon. Maybe return there, please. And you will know that in the Song of Solomon, there is here in these verses, in these chapters, there's Christ, the heavenly bridegroom, and there's the church, His bride. And we are part of that church, that bride. Lovely verse in Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, Who is this? that cometh up from the wilderness. The wilderness reminds us of a place that is not pleasant. 
There's a barrenness about it. Of course, there's a dryness about it. And it says, Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? Leaning upon him. And folks, many a time we have leaned upon him. And brethren, we need to be there for our wives to lean on. To lean upon. So I think when we think here, when we consider together our delight, sacrifice is important. But sharing is important in, in that we be sensitive there to our wives' needs and that we provide support for them. Another thought under delighting in our wives, what about strengthening her? Very easy to criticize, to find fault. But in verse 26, it says there concerning Christ and His church, that He might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the Word. Now, we know that this refers to God, Christ's ongoing work with His church, and He sanctifies His people. It's an ongoing work, that work of sanctification. But whenever Christ is sanctifying you, yes, sometimes He shows us things that need to be adjusted, but very often He strengthens us by giving us encouragements along the way. And again, our wives might not ask for gratitude, but they'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate that gratitude. But to strengthen them spiritually, man, the best way to do it is by example. That is the best way. I said before one time, if you want to know what any preachers like, including me, really ask my wife. It can be anything in the pulpit. But ask my wife the best way to strengthen them spiritually is by example. And considering the love of Jesus for His church strengthens us. And as she sees Christ in us, see us us delighting in her as Christ delights in His church, she'd be strengthened too. Strengthening her. But then what about selflessness? Verse 28 says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife love of themselves. This is not a referring to having an ego or anything like that. It's to do with care and caring for her. You see, Christ, again, is the example. He willingly laid down His life for us. And in this selfish world in which we live, how often this is a very big stumbling block because human nature being what it is, we, we find very little else to equal ourselves if we're not careful. So Christ makes it very clear here that we to love our wives just as much as we love ourselves. In other words, putting her interests first. Putting her interests first. And you may say, well, that's a difficult thing, and I mightn't get any thanks for it, and she mightn't do that and all. Well, verse 18 again, being filled with the Spirit of God in every area of her life will enable us to fulfill this um, responsibility of ours, this selflessness. What about another thought? Solitude. My wife's always busy working in her employment, working at home, working at church, and I'm busy enough too. I'm looking after another congregation at the moment, as well as Akali. But again, we have to remember that Christ always has time for us. He's the head of the church, and He always has time for us. And me, I have to say to myself, Karen, you have to make time. You have to make time. I'm going to tell you a story. When Cherith was 17, when I started, we started going out together, dating, and um, she was doing A-levels. And I was a little bit older, and I was working, but there were many times in my E21, some of you will know what that is, Navy 3 Series BMW, and uh, that I loved. I, I managed a time I went and I picked her up, and we went away to the beach, and we went there for a walk, or very often we went to the Augury, if you know where that is, and we'd go along for a walk, and yes, we, we held hands. Uh, and we were both busy, but we had that time together, and that continued on after we got married. Fast forward to last Thursday. It was a day that the sky was really blue. We'd been telling ourselves we would go to 
um, away to the coast again once before the winter. We had the opportunity. We picked last Thursday. It was a beautiful day. So I got Cherith, who's not 17 now. Uh, and I don't have the E21 anymore, but I've got an E45. And we got in it, and we went up to Port Stewart. And we went, and, well, to be perfectly honest with you, and should I be anything less, I, I ate so much ice cream, I didn't really want to walk. That's the truth. Didn't want to walk. But we went for a walk along the beach. And yes, we held hands. Solitude. Quality time together. So, brethren, when we consider our wives as what they are, and for me, what they are is a gift from God. Delight in your wife is what the Lord, I believe, is saying. Now, we will never be able to equal the love that Christ has for His church, but it doesn't mean we don't try. Delight in our wives is important. We've mentioned some things. There's one other thing, and it begins with S as well. It is one word, sorry. Someone said years ago in my hearing that I want to say, first of all, that Christ never needs to say sorry, but we need to say sorry to Him every day. But someone years ago, they said that, oh, being married means that you never have to say sorry. I felt like saying, I'm not sure what planet you live on, but there's always room to say sorry. And more than that, men, head of the home, take the initiative. Take the initiative and say sorry first. If we delight in our wives. So, so much for that point, delighting in our wives. But then, what about difference of opinion? Well, when it comes to Christ and His church, it doesn't matter what our opinion is. Christ always knows best. But sometimes, men, married men, sometimes, husbands, we don't know best. We don't know best. And if there's differences of opinion, that is because of individuality. I always remember the story of two young girls, and one of them was she was engaged and was getting married very soon. And she had a really good friend, and they were out together. I can't remember what the sport was that they were involved in, but they were involved in something anyway. And the two girls were together um, after the sport in the changing room, in the girls' changing room. And one of the young ladies, she noticed something on the other girl's back, the girl that was getting married. And she said to her, calling her by her name, she says, what's that? And she says, oh, that's, that's just a bruise. I just, you know, I got hurt. She says, no, that's knuckle marks. That's knuckle marks. And then she went on, she said, oh, well, I know it's just, and she named her, her fiancé. She says to him, it's just he has this anger issue, and he, we, we disagree on some things, you see. And it, it, sometimes then he gets cross, but whenever we get married, it'll be all right. And her friend said, no, it'll not be all right. But folks, she went away and got married anyway because she loved him. And I won't say a lot more, but they weren't married for very long because it didn't go away. And there were disagreements, as there can be in any home, and differences of opinion. But his way of settling it was by thumping his wife. That's the answer to nothing. If you look at verse 33, we all have differences of opinion. Verse 33 in Ephesians 5 will help a lot. It says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband sitting down and discussing things as a married man and woman should do will help us with differences of opinion. We can never say to any young lady, make sure you find a man who never has a different opinion than you. That'll not happen. But I would say, young woman here, just be careful. Just be careful when it comes to these things because differences of opinion are something. They're there before you get married and they're there after you get married. 
as well. I want to move on to a third and final point here. We've looked at a husband's delight in his wife. That's one of his roles. The differences of opinion is something that has to be worked out in a loving way. But then, importantly, what about direction? Well, if you look at verse 23 and 24, I'll just read them again. It says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, I want to say, and I think I can say it without fear of contradiction here tonight, that no believer, no true believer, has any objection to Christ being the head of His church. And as He directs His church, which He does do, He does so in love. These verses are self-explanatory. Husbands are the head of the wife. Now, they're not dictators. It's not dictatorship, but rather it is leadership because you're a leader in a partnership. When Peter was writing there, 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 3, sorry, I should say, and verse 7, it says, Likewise ye husbands dwell with them, that's with your wives, according to knowledge, giving, order, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. The thought there is of partnership, and I want to say that when it says there about uh, as unto the weaker vessel, it's not saying that she's weak intellectually or that she's weak spiritually, but she's physically weak or generally speaking. And we are to give honor unto them, but do you want to look at verse 1 of chapter 3 in First Peter? It says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, some are not are married to men who are not saved, they also may without the word be won by the conversation or the lifestyle and attitude of the wives. You see there where it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection. This is a military term. It's a military term that refers to being placed in rank, not by the Free Presbyterian Church or the Presbytery, but it refers to being placed in rank and in the military field. It stands to sense a general and a staff sergeant are not in the same position. They're both important, but they're not in the same position. And be in subjection to your own husband means that, that he is the head. You does not mean that you are a slave. You're not to be treated like a doormat. But the husband's to give direction because God says so. He's to give direction. There has been in fairly recent years, there seems to be a, 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 a fairly new phenomenon known as feminism. And I don't know if you know much about it or not, but I don't say anything good about it. And even if you want to look at it in a slightly different angle, in some places, yes, in evangelical circles, certainly across in other countries and possibly in the United Kingdom as well, there's this empowered woman movement. I mean, I think of that, this empowered woman movement, how we're independent, we're such independent, empowered women, and they've got big speeches, and I think they've got a big problem with God's order of things and with the church's order of things. And yes, it is evidenced in some places, and I want to say right away, it's, that's, not, that's not feminine at all. That's trying to usurp the place of the man. I'm speaking to actually a lady about this very thing not that long ago. And she said, yes, we're not doormats and we're not slaves. She says, but these empowered women and these empowered speeches that are promoting the empowerment of women, she says, they're wee bullies with a smile. Wee bullies with a smile. And folks, that is no place in God's work. If, you, if I allow that to happen, 
I'm not suggesting it would happen in any of our homes, but if I do, I'm a wimp, and I'm disobeying the Lord because the Lord says I'm to be the head of the home. It's not a suggestion. It is something that the Lord has given me to do. And if I say, oh, well, I just love my wife, and I just want her to call all the shots, and I heard a man saying one time, I just need a strong woman to step into my life and take over, and I thought you, I'll say nothing about what I thought about. But folks, direction, spiritually, direction, and it's a different subject, but if there is offspring in the house, direction in the daily round, verse 18 is the answer being filled in every part with the Holy Spirit of our lives. So you can see, I trust, from what I've said tonight, that the husband is a very privileged person, but he's a man with a very serious responsibility. And I do trust that the Lord, in these difficult times, times when there seems to be so many problems arising, even in places where you wouldn't have thought it would have arisen, I trust the Lord will help us to be Spirit-filled men, that we will take our role seriously, that we will delight in our wives, and that when there is that difference of opinion, that we'll talk it out, and then that we will give good direction to our wives. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to hand back now to the Reverend Gray. Well, again, I'd like to thank the Reverend Sal for coming along and uh, preaching tonight on this subject, and we do pray that the Lord will bless His Word to all of our hearts. We're going to sing a closing hymn. It's hymn number 364 in the hymn book. Peace like a river is flooding my soul, since Christ my Savior maketh me whole. Sweet peace abiding my portion shall be. Jesus my Savior is precious to me. Let's stand and we'll sing this lovely hymn as we close tonight.
we thank Thee and we praise Thee for the instruction in Thy Word tonight. And, O oh God, we do pray, Lord, that those of us who are husbands, that You would help us to love our wives, Lord, as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. And, O oh God, we know, Lord, in this role, as in every role in the home, how we need as Christians to be Spirit-filled. And, O oh God, we pray in these days that we will know a fresh infilling of God the Holy Spirit day by day. We thank Thee for this exhortation, even in this chapter. And, Lord, as our brother has been pointing out, it is not in this chapter by accident. O oh God, we realize that in all our relationships, in the home and outside the home, and in the church indeed as well, and at work, Lord, day by day, we need that fresh infilling of God, the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, bless our homes. We pray, Lord, that you would undertake, Lord, for our children and for our wives, and Lord, for every, Lord, aspect of the home. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would send us a breath of revival even in these days. We thank thee for the great example that the Lord Jesus Christ has set us. And as our brothers told us tonight, and as we know, Lord, O oh God, it's impossible to love our wives as Christ loved the church. But, O oh God, we thank Thee, Lord, that You're able to give help and grace day by day. So, Lord, bless us now. We pray Thee, we ask Thee, Lord, that You would separate us in Thy love. And, O oh God, bring us to our homes in safety and bless the rest of the meetings this week. We thank Thee for Your presence again this evening. For us in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen.